Better late than never in terms of me uploading a new video and for Prusa to introduce an affordable Core XY printer with the Core One. Let me get it out of the way that I paid for this myself and I didn't get it earlier than anyone else. I was in the first batch of shipments and I've had it since February 4th. Now I've printed PLA, PETG, ABS, infused filament, and TPU on this, and it basically hasn't stopped printing since I got it. If you've ever watched one of my reviews, you know I don't like to spend a lot of time on all the features. I just wanna show you guys what I find most important, which is how it prints. But let me quickly go over some stuff I do like. I really like that the cardboard packaging has built-in handles to easily pull it out of the box, and then you can roll it out of the packaging and get set up. And it was so quick and easy to get this thing printing. I like that the plate on the front is magnetic. So if you tip it forward, it just magnets off and doesn't break. I like that unlike the Mark IV S, you can actually see the nozzle and the first layer and the case light is right at where the nozzle will be printing. So it's easy to see. I really like that the entire thing is steel, which avoids the bimetallic effect of having different metals with different expansion rates. Ask the rat rig guys how that's going. Now I wanna mention some stuff I don't really like. I'm not the biggest fan of the way that this top vent is. I wish it wasn't just a manual little slider. It's not that big of a deal, but I do wish it was different. The top is also very bendy, so if you put stuff on it, it'll sag a little bit. I'm not the biggest fan of the way the nozzle swaps are. On the Mark IV, there's a handy little tool that'll grip the heat block for you so you can pull the nozzle out. I'm sure that something like that is being worked on with the Core One, but for now, you kind of just have to do it all with your hand. It's not a big deal again, but it's something I want to note. Now, there really isn't much that I dislike about this printer, but this one deserves maybe a special mention because I like and dislike it. The way that this printer is made, I can still use my plates from my Mark III from a few years ago, which is what is loaded in here right now, which is incredible that they were able to keep the compatibility for all their printers going forward. Hell, even right now, they actively sell kits on their website take a Mark III and turn it into a Core One. That's awesome. But I think the thing that annoys me the most is even though we got the bigger area of the on the plate that you can print on, even though it's the same pr plate, it's still a relatively small printer, especially when you compare it in the Y dimension to like the X1 and the P1, you have 36 more millimeters on those printers and lots of companies are producing even bigger machines than this, which, hey, I get it, the XL is a thing that exists, but the main draw of the XL is that it's a tool changer. And I'm not saying that the Core One is a bad printer by any stretch of the imagination. But what I hope to see is that the Core One is the evolution of the Mark line. And we eventually see the Core One, a Core One L that's like 280 millimeters cubed or 300 cubed. And then the XL is there at 360 millimeters cubed. So now let me hop off my soapbox and let's look at how this thing prints. Now you'll see that I have some prints from the Mark IV, the Mark IV S, the X1, and the Core One, of course. You can see I did all these with the default settings and I noted where I changed the settings. I like to do these tests as default as possible because that's what someone who isn't as deep into how printers work will probably use. And if you know enough to change the settings, then you probably aren't concerned with watching some doofus on YouTube Week it up. Let's start with PLA because that is usually printed the fastest and requires the most cooling, which allows us to benchmark the tool head. I printed these three models, some of which you've seen before, like the Cali Dragon and this rock face test, and this overhang test that I personally designed. Let's start with the Cali Dragon. I go through this section pretty fast, so pause to check things out if you want to. I don't want to do too much exposition, I just kind of want you guys to form your own conclusions. The Mark IV Non-S is included here mostly as a control because it has kind of bad cooling. And you'll also see that the Mark IV S kind of does the best in all of these. It's funny because the Core One has the same tool head and cooling, but the Mark IV S kind of beat it out. You'll see that the Core One and the X1C, they're really very similar, especially in their overhang performance and their extrusion consistency. An important thing to remember is that this rock face has parts that are printed just in midair, so it's impossible to print it perfectly. But you can see that the Mark IVs, the Core One, and the X1C do a pretty good job. Again, in my opinion, I would say the Mark IVs is the best here. It does it the best job of like freezing those extrusions in midair. But overall, I don't have anything bad to say about any of these printers.
Now let's move on to the real torture test. This is a model that I designed that accurately tests overhangs. I wanna make an entire video on this topic, but the long and short of it is that most people talk about overhangs incorrectly. I constantly hear about overhangs as a degree value. Even in Prusa's own marketing, you can see that. But their own slicer tells you how they're actually calculated. If we read the tool tips for the overhang speed in Prusa slicer, overhang size is expressed as a percentage of overlap of the extrusion with the previous layer. 100% would be full overlap, no overhang. And I drew a little model for you right here where this is the layer that is already printed. This is the layer that you are printing. This percentage is the overhang. So overhangs are a percent of how much the layer being put down is overhanging the previous layer. This model takes into account the layer height and width and does 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10 percent, not degree, overhangs. The math is all done in Fusion and a model is created for a specific layer height and width. This model truly tests a printer's ability to do overhangs. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's check it out. Again, I'm using the Mark IV as just kind of a control as a printer that doesn't necessarily have the best cooling. I would say all of these printers do a pretty decent job up to 30%. But the thing is here, the Mark IV S beats out the other three printers by like a long shot. It is definitely the best performing printer here. I would say the X1C can't handle those 10% as good as the Core 1 can, but you can see that there is a little bit more consistency in the overhang performance of the X1. If you noticed in my spreadsheet, I did the prints on the X1 with the door open and the top off, which on the Core 1, I did it with the door closed and the top open. And the chamber hovered around 30 Celsius in my 23 Celsius room. I did go ahead and run it again with the door open. Honestly, this one doesn't really look that much better. I don't think the door open is really necessary to get good overhang performance on this printer. I don't think it's the limiting factor. The next thing we can look at is ABS or ASA prints, which require a higher chamber temperature of 50 C+. I have some comparisons with the X1 and the Plus 4, which remember the Plus 4 has a heated chamber, actively heated chamber. The X1 was preheated for about 30 minutes and hit 40 Celsius chamber temp and the Core 1 was set to a 40C minimum temp and took about 23 minutes to start the print. And by the time those 23 minutes were up, it was already at the minimum of 40C for about 10 minutes. So it was actually at 47C by time it started printing the prime line. This part was printed on the Core 1 and all of these parts were printed in Polymaker ASA. And you actually can see that there's a bit of VFAs here. You can see it a lot right there, but this part did not warp at all uh, due to the Core One's chamber temperature, which is really nice. You can see this is nice and bored flat. And if I compare this with the part from the X1 on the left, you can see there is still some VFAs. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but I can definitely see them in person. I would say both of these are good parts, very usable. And I don't think either of them look bad, which is important, especially considering I'm just using default settings. One thing I do want to note is that I couldn't get a completely non-warped part off the X1. You can see it pretty clearly on the left corner there that it's warping up. Here we're comparing to a part off of the Chidi Plus 4 on the left. And both of these parts have very consistent extrusion. And that is something that I noted on my Plus 4 review. You can see it's very smooth here on the sides. But I still can see VFAs in both of these parts. Um, you can see it right here. Like I said, with the X1, it's a lot more obvious in person. Here's another part from the Core 1. And again, this didn't warp at all. I know that you can still kind of see a little bit of light under the ruler, and maybe there is a slight bit of warping, but from what I can tell, what I can feel in my hands, there really is no warping. You can see some nice consistent extrusion. It handled the overhangs over here pretty well. And overall, I'm pretty impressed with this part. For this next section, I just want to show you guys what it's like to actually run a print on this thing from start to finish. So the first thing I did is clean my build plate. And then we're going to do this print in TPU, which is notoriously kind of difficult on some extruders. I went ahead and printed this straight from the dry box since TPU also is very moisture absorbing. 
So I just feed my filament up from the side. I'm doing this one-handed and trying to hold a camera so it's a little difficult. Once the printer detects that there's filament, it starts to insert it and then we just kind of wait for it to extrude. Even though this is TPU, I didn't have any issues. The next extruder grabbed it and just fed it through. Jumping into the slicer, I have this model that I wanted to print in TPU. It's a little cable tie. I have my print settings selected in the structural profile. The only changes I made were cubic instead of grid. Filament, I have Sane Smart TPU loaded, which is exactly what I'm printing. And then I have Core 1 selected, and I didn't change anything. We'll slice it. Send to connect. We can see my printer. It's idle. I'll select it, and then send and start print. And it's sent. It's that easy. Turning around to my printer here, it starts downloading almost instantly, and then we're off printing. Get to watch the first layer go down, and I don't see any issues with this first layer. It's looking really good to me. I don't see any obvious signs of stringing yet, even though it's TPU. I did dry the filament, but yeah. And here we have the finalized print. It did end up actually stringing just a little bit, which is probably just a case of me needing to dry the filament a little more. And the final product works out really well, and it's organizing my cables. Outside of that, I do have a Diamondback nozzle that I installed on my printer. And I printed some of this Airy One PETG glass fiber, which turned out amazing. Here it is compared to a print off of one of my Vorons. And this filament is nice because it does kind of hide some of the imperfections, which all infused filaments kind of do. But it came out great on the Core 1, and I had no fuss doing an infused filament on this printer. Then I just started printing stuff. I printed the Bunkers Benchy that prints in about 8 minutes. I did these boxes in PLA. I did some fidgets, I printed this knife model in PETG, everything was going great. And then I tried this trash can model, and this happened? This is the first time I've ever had a print be so stuck to a plate that it ripped the bottom layers off trying to remove it from the plate. I'm going to chalk this one up as a fluke because nothing has happened like that before or since, although it was a bit strange and I was going to let you guys know about it. But there you have it folks, the Core 1 has been an awesome printer and an awesome addition to my small fleet of printers. It seems to handle all the different types of filament that I can throw at it, and Prusa Connect has been a breeze to use, especially now that I upgraded my Mark IV to a Mark IV S, and I can use it with that too. Hopefully you guys get a sense of how this thing really performs, and you can use it to make an informed decision on if you want to pick one up. I personally couldn't recommend it enough, and remember, absolutely nobody is paying me to say that. So let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments. And remember, it doesn't matter which printer you pick, as long as you subscribe because your prints will always come out buttery smooth. I'll see you guys in the next one.